Hello, my dear students. In my previous lecture, we had taken up the chapter geomorphic processes. And I hope the chapter must be clear to you, the portion which we dealt in my previous lecture, that was regarding the forces which affect in formation of the landformer. For example, we had done the endogenic forces and exogenic forces. Tension, compression, folding, faulting. So, all this may clear to you. Now, the second part of the lesson we will be taking up now and that is known as the weathering. Now, what is weathering? Weathering is the mechanical disintegration and the chemical decomposition of the rocks with the effect of weather and climate. Now, as I told you, this is the decomposition of the rocks, whether that is mechanical or chemical. Now, we take up there are the three types of the weathering. One is the physical weathering, which is also known as mechanical weathering. Second is the chemical weathering and the third is biological weathering. Now, what is physical or mechanical weathering? It is the disintegration of the rocks by the mechanical process. The process can be the physical process. So, that is how this is known as physical or mechanical weathering. Now, if you look at the screens, there is a visual for you to see that how the mechanical weathering looks like. Now, we take up the different agents which are responsible for the mechanical weathering. Number one is insulation, number two frost, number three the pressure release. Yes, children, in my previous lesson, I told you that what is insulation? Now, we talk about the effect of the insulation because insulation is the amount of heat the earth receives from the sun. So, this heat varies and with this heat, there is the different amount of heating of the earth's surface during the daytime as well as during the night time. So, this results into the block disintegration. And this block disintegration is because of the differential in the heating of the rocks, which results into the expansion and contraction of the rocks. Expansion due to the excessive heating, contraction of the rocks due to the less heat the rocks they contract. So, when this process takes place repeatedly, then there is a block disintegration. Now, look at your screens and you can have a visual of how the block disintegration looks like. So, here there are the few boulders of the rocks and they are disintegrated because of the effect of the insulation. Now, insulation, I will just like to repeat it that the weathering by the insulation is very common in the areas which are hot and the desert. This is due to the rapid changes in the daily temperature. Rise in the day temperature results into the expansion of the rocks and the result of the contraction is because of when the temperature reduces during the night time. Some rocks, they are not the good conductors of heat. So, what is the effect of that? Only the upper layer of the rock is contracted or expanded due to the changes in the temperature. So, that means when you talk about the upper layer, so that means only the upper part which is externally visible. So, what happens because of this? the exfoliation takes place. Now, exfoliation, when you, I take up the term, you can just correlate it with the layers of the onion, like the layers they get extracted. So, exfoliation on the rocks means when only the upper part of the rock is 
exfoliated or that is removed that is known as the exfoliation. The outer layers are thus peeled off from the main area of the rock and this process is known as the exfoliation. Now the second agent for the physical weathering is frost. It is an active agent in the cold climate. Cold climate can be on the high altitude or on the high latitude areas. Now once the cracks and the joints are formed in the rock, now what happens? If the frost water enters into those cracks or the joints, then that freezes because of the lowering of the temperature. So after the freezing of the water, the volume of the water increases and that results into the further mechanical disintegration of the rocks. Now this visual, if you look up at your screens, this visual tells you how the frost water enters into the cracks and that results into the further disintegration of the rocks. Now the third factor responsible for the mechanical disintegration is the pressure release. Igneous and the metamorphic rocks crystallize deep in the interior under the influence of the two factors. One is pressure, another is temperature. Now we take up the second type of weathering children and that is the chemical weathering. As the name sounds, because of the certain chemical reactions, when the rock disintegrates or chemically decomposes, that is known as the chemical weathering. Now this visual shows you the pictures of the chemical weathering, how the rocks look after the chemical weathering takes place. Now processes of chemical weathering, there are four processes, one is oxidation, carbonation, hydration and the fourth one is solution. Now we will be discussing all these four agents separately. Now first we take up what is oxidation. Effects of oxidation in the air and water on the rock is known as oxidation. So everyone must be knowing when the oxygen reacts with the water, the oxidation takes place. So the rainwater, when it mixes with the atmospheric oxygen, reacts on the iron compounds, resulting in the decomposition and crumbling of the rocks. And this decomposition and crumbling results into the fracturing of the rocks. And with this oxidation, the color of the rock also changes into red or brown. Now next is carbonation. Again, this is the reaction of carbon dioxide with the water. So when the carbon dioxide mixed with the water affects the rocks, that is known as carbonation. It has the acidic effect and dissolves the calcareous rocks, for example, the limestone or the gypsum. And this action is very active in the underground water also, because when we talk about the different features formed by the underground water, like the stalactites, stalagmites, these are all the reactions of the carbonation. And these stalactites and stalagmites will be studying up when we take up the landforms chapter. Now the next is hydration. When the hydrogen of the water dissolves the rocks, I repeat it, when the hydrogen dissolves the rocks, that is known as hydration. So due to this process, the rocks break due to the increased pressure and that also results into the change in the coloring of the rocks as well. And the last is solution. As the name sounds, solution. So that means when the soluble minerals get dissolved in the water, that is known as solution. So the rainwater is able to dissolve the certain minerals 
and they reach the soil which is called the solution. For example, the rock salt, the gypsum, these are the minerals which get easily dissolved in the water. Now we take up the third type of weathering that is known as biological weathering. This includes the action of animals, insects, vegetation and man of course. Now first we take up the action of animals and insects. Many animals and insects such as dogs, rabbits, rats, termites, they consume the large quantities of the rock and soil for making their habitat and for extracting the food. So when they burrow, they make the burrows and they dig out the rock, then what happens to the rock? The rock weakens and that tends to disintegrate. So this action of the animals and insects help in the disintegration of the rocks. Now here this visual shows you how the animals, they are making their burrows and they help in the disintegration of the rocks. Now the second agent is the vegetation. Children, you must have seen the unwanted plants growing by the sides of the walls or on your roofs. So that also helps in the breaking up of the wall or the roof. The same thing happens with the vegetation, which helps in the disintegration of the rocks. The long root fibers of the plants, they work down into the cracks of the rocks. This visual, as you can see, there's an unwanted plant by the side of the rock, which has helped in the disintegration of the rock. So this is how the vegetation results into the disintegration of rocks. Now lastly, we take up the activities of the man, which result into the weathering. Activities like man is involved in querying. Querying is the mining of the minerals. Second is, of course, the mining, in the other words, if you take up deforestation, because man is the one who is responsible for changing the environment because he is fully involved in the deforestation for the various reasons. Then we take up indiscriminate cultivation of the land because in proportion to the population, the land is not sufficient. So what man does on the same piece of land, the repeated cultivation is known as the indiscriminate cultivation of the land, which results in the in disintegration of the rocks. So this was all about the weathering, which was the second part of the chapter geomorphic processes. So I'll just sum up the chapter. The weathering we have discussed in the three forms, mechanical, chemical, and biological. And all the three types of the weathering, they are the different agents which help in resulting the weathering. So weathering, the definition I would like to repeat, that is the mechanical disintegration and chemical decomposition of the rocks. So remember children, these two terminologies, mechanical disintegration and chemical decomposition of the rocks. So hope the concepts must be clear to you and further we'll be taking up the various landforms which takes place due to the result of the weathering. Thank you children.